Hi there, and it's good to see you here on Friday's edition of Hoo-Ha Sports Today as we set you up for the weekend's action in the Premier League. Yes, we have that match of the season to look at between Manchester United and Chelsea. Then Formula 1 too gets back into action after a three-week layoff with the Turkish GP. The track guide is coming up as well. First up, the Europa League. And with all the bus ahead of the bigger European Cup final between United and Barcelona, the second-tier competition will be an all-Portuguese affair. As expected, after all, there were three Portuguese teams in the semis and a sole Spanish representative. Porto lost the second leg last night by three goals to two, but it's their first leg's 5-1 result that proved to book their ticket to the final in a 7-4 aggregate win. Quick note that Ramadal Falcao scored his fifth goal in the competition, bringing his tournament tally to 16 and passes Jurgen Klinsmann's 15-year-old record. And they will meet Braga, who overturned a 2-1 loss in the first leg and progressed on the away goals rule, beating Benfica 1-0 on the night. So, the first ever All-Portuguese Final is set for May the 18th in Dublin. And it's been a fantastic season for Porto. Just take a look at the Portuguese League standings. With two games left in the season, Portugal's champions are heading to a perfect no-loss season so far with 26 wins and two draws, both of them being away ties. And in the league, Braga have lost to Porto both at home and away. And as we move on into the weekend, no matter where you might be or whether you're a United, Chelsea or even an Arsenal fan, all are will be glued to the TV for the match of the season. And as you can expect, there have been some trash talking, call it mind games if you will, that's been taking place between both camps. United's elder statesman Ryan Giggs wants to end Carlo Ancelotti's title dream once and for all, calling his teammates to step up to the plate and sink Chelsea on Sunday. Giggs said the key will be just to produce the level of football we know we are capable of. Chelsea are flying at the moment, but apart from Sunday against Arsenal, we have been as well. And as that they are not bothered by the pass and the future starts with a result against Chelsea. And in the blue corner, we have Michael Essien. Knowing that winning is the only option for them, the Ghanaian said the team is playing well and he has no doubt that they will give it everything they have to beat Man United. And on their dip in form, he said that it could have been a confidence thing, but hard work on the training ground has made them click again. Well, Arsenal are the other insignificant part of this title equation, but mathematically, they are still in it. Like this detailed permutation of what needs to unfold in order for Arsenal to win the title by the Islington Gazette. First, Arsenal must win their remaining games and hope that Chelsea beat United on Sunday. Then they must hope for both teams to lose one of their remaining fixtures. Follow me so far? So according to the Islington Gazette, if United lose to Blackburn and Chelsea were defeated by Everton, then Arsenal must claim big wins in their remaining fixtures. Highly unlikely to happen. And the Arsenal fans too have expressed their unoptimistic hopes. I would love for us to basically finish the season ahead of menu. I think uh, Chelsea might take the title at the end um, and it's always I don't want to have any full scope here yeah. but uh, uh, I think it's better if we aim a little bit lower than uh, what we're supposed to and then if we finish uh, clinching the title at the end of the season then it will be fantastic that was Amri of Arsenal Malaysia more thoughts from the Arsenal fans in Malaysia on our latest webisode of Club Chatter available on hoohah.my meanwhile there are other battles raging on in the Premier League I think the Everton City match will be the one to watch as Spurs will be hoping for the Toffees to still give them a chance of closing the gap to fourth elsewhere Bolton who are two points behind Everton are in eight will play Sunderland who need all three points otherwise they could be dragged into the relegation dogfight while West Ham requires seven Seven points from the remaining three matches to at least have a chance of staying back in the Premier League and will face Blackburn who are in 16th. Sunday is D-Day but I see the much anticipated match between United and Chelsea ending in a draw while Arsenal will suffer a towel slap by Rory De Lapp's throw in set pieces. Liverpool won't be in action until Monday night as they travel to play Fulham. Alright, from football move on to Formula 1 and after a three week break the race calendar shifts to the west and it starts with the Turkish Grand Prix this weekend. And after three races as Red Bull's reigning world champion Sebastian Vettel has a 21-point lead over McLaren's Lewis Hamilton. Teammate Jensen Button is in the third and fourth battle with Mark Webber, while the Ferrari boys are in fifth and sixth. Lotus Renault are doing pretty well, while the injured driver Robert Kubica is also on the road to recovery as he has been already discharged from hospital after that horrific crash which required him to undergo multiple surgeries and is now recuperating at home. Well, that's good to know. So before we leave you, we bring in Red Bull's Mark Webber to give you a track guide ahead of this weekend's race in Istanbul. Till Monday, you have a great sporting weekend. I'm Patrick for the team saying it's bye for now.
the Turkish Grand Prix, I think of anti-clockwise, so a little bit harder on the neck. Also, lots of traffic again, two big bridges trying to get to the circuit, and not many spectators. Istanbul, 5.3 kilometres, 58 laps, counterclockwise, in all 310 kilometres. Five high-speed stretches, three slow turns, one ideal spot for overtaking. Top speed, 315 kilometres an hour. Here we are at the Turkish Grand Prix in Istanbul, starting a lap in the Red Bull Simulator. Breaking for turn one, it's blind. Third gear, very important to try and get a nice clean exit as we're going uphill. Looks a lot steeper than you think. Very hard on the engine into a blind corner, which is very easy to overcook. And then you need to turn four, which is a blind right-hander again, off camber. Still punching downhill, through a double left. Very important to get those two right. A little bit of a relax for the driver, then he's going to be arriving at turn seven. Accelerating away from turn seven to the very, very famous turn eight, which is very, very hard on the car. Big steering loads. Four apexes in one corner, which is very unique. And then we plunge downhill, having done that exciting corner. Braking then for the hairpin. Left-hander, which is a little bit open on the exit. Good spot for the spectators to watch. Accelerating hard away into a very easy kink in a Formula One car. Maybe trying to position yourself for an overtaking move on the inside as the slipstream works very well along here. Braking hard for second gear. Into the tight left-hander, immediately into a very, very tight right-hander. And then the last corner is very important to get right as you're trying to close the lap. Accelerating hard towards the start-finish line, and that's a lap of the Turkish Grand Prix.